So the first thing um, to talk about with regard to the Aerokit project has been the front wing. This is the road course front wing of the Honda Aerokit. And uh, we've had uh, some interesting challenges to deal with um, in forming this. The first thing is we have to use the stock Dallara main plane. Uh, that's the same for us and Chevy. Um, and also there's quite a lot of control over where we can attach our components to. So we have to use the stock mounting points here uh, to support our new flap assemblies. The aero kit rule around the front wing um, is very simple. We, they basically allow you boxes um, in which to develop. The first box um, extends from the outside of the front wing main plane to the edge of the end plate and actually comes up to about here. Um, and then the second box really constrains the flat region of the, of the wing. Nothing can span those boxes. So you can see that we split everything along very deliberate and obvious split lines. Uh, the flap assembly itself is quite interesting um, and people have talked about it as having lots of elements but we like to think of it um, actually as all working together. So you'll notice there's lots of slots and bits and pieces. They all have a specific aerodynamic function uh, that we're trying to set the flow up because uh, the way we design front wings is really to try, try and get the flow down the rest of the car working as well as we can uh, to give us as much downforce as possible. Um, another thing you can see here is the teams have the, the flap adjuster which allows them to make some alterations to the car in a race when they're doing a pit stop or tyre changes. Um, and we've had to engineer that uh, to keep the aerodynamic efficiency as high as possible. The other thing uh, to note of interest is the, the cascade of elements we have in the um, outside of the end plate box. People look at the Honda Aero Kid and think that we're actually trying to generate a lot of downforce or a lot of front downforce with these components, but actually they have a very, very interesting interaction with the flow over the front wheel, which is behind them, and then down the rest of the car. So you fans have got to think of the front wing as kind of setting up the airflow over the rest of the car to give us maximum performance in the turns on the straightaway. So moving back down, um, talking about the Aero Kid a little bit more, uh, one of the challenges we've all faced has been um, the modification to the underbody that IndyCar have brought in in 2015. Um, it's called the safer floor and basically um, this whole area which is now a hole you can pass your hand through um, is, has been removed for 2015 compared to all the other years the DW12 has run um, and that basically um, has been brought in to make the car uh, less prone to flying. All of us have come to the conclusion that this has really made the car much, much more stable in all sorts of uh, uh, attitudes the car could get to if they had a big high speed impact. Now, the effect of removing this big area of the floor has been a, a big loss in downforce, so, so we've been working hard to recover that loss in downforce. It, it removes the, a big part of the underbody, which has actually loaded the front tyres up. So that's been quite a challenge for both the Speedway uh, and the uh, road course kits. Um, moving on back, uh, you can see that uh, the side pod detail, if you compare it to what we had last year, is quite a bit different. And we have this modified, slightly unusual shape blocker assembly here, which is actually possible for the teams to modify. And you're going to see various trims come and go depending on the ambient conditions or the speed of the racetrack. That's going to vary quite a lot. Moving further back here, um, specific to the Honda kit, um, we have a, an interesting device here which we call a, um, a dive plane assembly. Um, that does some interesting things to the flow, setting up the flow down the back of the car and modifying what's going on on the hole. Um, moving further back we have um, the rear wheel, wheel pod winglets. Uh, basically these devices um, set the flow up over the top of the rear wheels and also they have an interesting interaction with the flow in front of the rear wheels and the underbody um, and uh, again you're going to see different configurations of those depending on the racetracks and other things that we go to. Uh, in terms of the engine cover itself, uh, fans will notice quite a big difference um, between this, what we've come up with and last year. Uh, really in terms of the fin which is on the back of the, of the engine cover, there's some subtle shape differences that we've done to accommodate the Honda engine installation. But um, actually that fin assembly is pretty much the largest you can have under the regulations. We see some aerodynamic and performance benefits in having that. Um, and uh, it's interesting that we've gone in a different direction than our competitors. So again, it's kind of going to make the cars a bit easier for the fans to differentiate. 
Okay, so now we're going to talk about things further at the back of the 2015 Honda Road Course Aero Kit. Um, first things fans will notice is we've um, um, got a, a very interesting treatment on the rear wheel guard. Uh, basically, we had one of those magic homologation boxes which allowed us to package things in above the rear wheel guard. Uh, for us, what we found was the most efficient was to have essentially an extra winglet. And from an aerodynamics point of view, what this winglet's doing is essentially extending the span of the rear wing. Uh, if, if we were allowed to, we'd have a, a rear wing which went all the way across the car. So by opening up these boxes, IndyCar have allowed us to essentially extend the width of the rear wing and you're going to see some interesting changes between that configuration and when we go on to ovals as well, so watch out for that. Uh, finally, on the rear um, is the rear wing and assembly. We are allowed a much shallower rear wing box, so they've cut down the height that we're allowed to, to, to go with with the ring. This is the stock Dallara main plane that we carried over from last year. Uh, so our solution to that is to a, a rather configurable rear wing assembly. You can see um, on Graham Rahal's car here, he's got um, what we call the standard flap one and two elements, and that's what's been released so far. But you might see in the next few races, other elements appearing within the homologation box, um, within that rear wing assembly. And those come and go depending on what downforce trim the teams want to uh, come up with, whether they want to sacrifice straightaway speed for speed in the turns. And that kind of depends on what type of tracks that the teams are racing at. Finally, Another challenge which, which makes the error kit story so much more interesting uh, for us aerodynamicists to, to challenge to try to beat uh, is the fact that um, IndyCar um, have decided to mandate a, a change in the underbody regulation. So we've had to remove what's called the side walls from the underbody and also these vortex and downforce generating straights. So we've been dealing with the holes in the floor, the changes in the underbody, and trying to come up with a race car that's drivable fast and got great balance. And we, we're, we're really looking forward to the challenge of, uh, of developing and tuning this complex package um, in the coming season and beyond.